Yeah, it'd be a part of it. Call this meeting to order the Board of Franklin County Commissioners, Wednesday, March 30th, 2022. Janet, roll call. Commissioner Saldemeyer? Present. Commissioner Harris? Present. Chair Dunn? Present. Vice Chair Dickinson? Present. Commissioner Waymeyer? Present. You join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, remain standing for the invocation. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to read from the New Testament. It says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vanity. Rather, be humble and value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. So thank you for making decisions that are helping as many people as possible. With that, I'd like to pray. Lord, we ask for your grace today and your strength to value and honor other people the way that you have valued and honored us. You laid your life down for us that we could find life. I pray the blessing of God over this commission to lead well and to make decisions that honor you and honor others. And I thank you for their service. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all. Thank you, Greg. Any correspondence, uh, Derek? No, sir. Any public comment? Yeah. No, sir. Okay. The Senate agenda today, um, consider and approve tax change orders on a positive $728.24, and consider and approve payroll for the pay period of February 21st, 2022 to March 20th, 2022, $1,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105,105
Okay, an affirmative motion in support of this would read as follows. I make a motion to award bids number two, four, five, eight, and ten to uh, Nutrien Solutions yep. and bid numbers one, three, six, seven A, seven B, and nine to Van Deest for the 2022 Noxious Weed chemical bid. I have a motion to approve. Second. Uh, Janet? Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Chair Dunn? <clears throat> yes. And like I'll, I'll end up doing like I did last year. These companies aren't wanting to hold their bids, bids real tight. So I'll do like I did last year and I'll, I'm going to spend a bunch of the budget up front. Um, then hopefully it worked out pretty good last year. Um, we had about three pallets of carryover that I wasn't expecting, but it, you know, we've got the storage space for that much. So um, just to hold the price for everybody, because if not, I don't know what's going to happen. We'll have to rebid it again. So, all right. Thank you all. Thanks. Thanks, Pat. Okay, it's good. Uh, consider awarding the 2022 dust control projects. Yes, commissioners. Uh, last Friday, we opened bids at the clerk's office. Um, we only had two bidders again this year. Uh, the price has gone up uh, the last several years. They've incrementally gone up about a penny a, a, a gallon. Uh, this year, it's up all, about a dime. Uh, so it will be a little more expensive this year, but um, I think the you know citizens appreciate this program, and it, it certainly makes a difference uh, for for them. So um, recommend going with Scottwood Industries again. Um, for the dust control program for 2022. Any questions, uh, David? Okay, affirmative motion for this is I make a motion to award the 2022 dust control to Scottwood Industries Incorporated in amount of $1.18.9 cents per gallon. So move. I can, oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. yeah. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Chair Dunn? Yes. Next item, uh, consider approving a proposal for CFS engineers to perform bridge inspections on fracture critical bridges in Franklin County. Commissioners, our um, fracture critical bridges are required to be inspected every year. Uh, we did, uh, we have two remaining fracture critical bridges. Uh, one of them is in the design phase to get um, uh, replaced, the one on Osborne Terrace. Um, uh, but we do have two of them that um, are still going to be standing whenever we have to have this report submitted. Uh, CFS engineers has historically performed this service for us, and they did two years ago. Uh, the price to um, take care of these inspections is the same as it was two years ago, the same $5,000. Uh, so we'd like to move forward with uh, getting them on board so they can get those taken care of for us. Any questions, David, on the bridge inspections? Affirmative motion would be authorizing the chairman to execute the agreement with CFS engineers for the fracture critical bridge inspections in the amount of $5,000. So moved. Okay. Hey, Janet. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Saldemeyer? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Chair Dunn? Yes. Next item is uh, discuss using ARPA funds to purchase a transport van for the jail. Morning. Morning, Commissioners. Um, as you said, uh, we wanted to discuss the possibility of using ARPA funds to purchase a uh, replacement transport van for the jail. Um, as you are all aware, um, for the past few years during budget um, talks and all that, we have brought up the, uh, the need to replace our transport van in the jail. Um, we have a priority list of things that we need to get accomplished in the jail. Um, as you're aware, we do have a jail trust fund, and we can use those funds for um, anything that's safety, security, welfare of the inmates and our facility. And so we have been, um, the number one thing on that list is a transport van. And so we have been um, 
saving money, accumulating that, getting that fund built up with the intention that we would be able to purchase um, at some point, hopefully this year, a transport van um, to get that replaced. We're not quite there yet. Um, and so what we are asking, <coughs> excuse me, this morning is um, to the, discuss the possibility of using ARPA funds to purchase that van. And then that would be able to, that would open us up the possibility of the opportunity to use the funds that we have accumulated to get some other um, projects done um, within the jail. The first one that we would be doing on that is, um, it would be replacing some showers in 216. Um, we have the funds available to do that project currently, which would also include um, wrapping in that project the cost of paying to farm out those inmates while we have that um, construction going on um, in, in that part of our facility. Um, we, like I said, we do have the funds for that. We're just not quite there yet for to have the enough funds to actually do the purchase of a transport van. Um, and so that's why I wanted to discuss this, as you can see um, in your, on the agenda um, cover sheet there, the proposed, the quote that we have for that complete van is $86,459.15. And that would be from Serve, who was uh, the vendor that we use down there in Andover for our vehicles. I believe that uh, EMS uses them as well. Um, the way that we that this opportunity came about now um, that made it more um, kind of pressing and me wanting to have the discussion is that they have a van in. Um, they are hard to, to come by. They have one that is in. Their um, original buyer um, had to back out of, the, um, of that purchase, so they have it. And there are some people lined up and ready to get it, but they gave us the, the option, and so... Uh, I asked them if they would hold on until we could have this discussion. So um, that's kind of why why the discussion is happening happening today, and I'm happy to answer any other questions that you all have for me. Well, and and I encouraged him to bring it in front of you. We I have every intention of having a study session where we discuss um, the requests that we have received for ARPA funds. And that being said, we have an opportunity at this van now that I think we're going to miss. And so, um, you know, I think this is certainly an appropriate use of those funds. Um, I do think that there are other needs in the jail that that jail trust fund could be used on. And how long have you had your current transport van? Um, it was a, it's been well before I got here, that van was a seized van and then it was retrofitted um, with a with a cage in it. It uh, it meets our it meets it meets the requirements and does the needs, but it um, there are some desires that it that it lacks. And for perspective, <coughs> I can remember discussing the replacement of the transport van with my predecessor in the administrator position. So we're going back at least right around at least six years that the sheriff has been at least that long because I remember that discussion with John Holmes. So this isn't a new request, um, something I feel like the sheriff and his staff have been patient with, certainly have the funds to cover it. We're not asking for a motion because I wanted to give the board the opportunity to discuss, but if you are in agreement and are prepared to make one, we would certainly take it. So I would stand with Jeff for any questions about this. <clears throat> Sheriff's office has quite a few vehicles and quite a few of them do have higher miles on it, but this is the only one we load up with prisoners and then send regularly outside of county lines. So the implications of a breakdown or a failure yes. would be a lot, a lot higher on this, this vehicle than maybe some of the others. I checked with uh, our jail administrators here this morning. We currently do have eight farmed out. Um, most of those are in one facility. And so the van allows us the opportunity to transport multiple people instead of making multiple trips. How many can you transport in your current van? I think it's nine. Is that correct? Nine, yes. And you often have multiple? We do, yes. What's good about this is that every other vehicle that you have is on a replacement schedule. This one is not. And I think that's why one of the reasons it keeps getting yes. put back. So this is a great opportunity to do it without 
confusing, yeah. That and the cost of this is um, significantly more than our, our the vehicles control. that are on that replacement schedule, yes. That, I know I was here when we did it, so it has to be over eight years ago. Yeah. And we know we bought it used then and retrofitted it to work at the time. So it sounds like we got pretty good service out of it for a used vehicle and then been using it for eight years. Served its purpose. Yes. Well, if if the board is inclined, then then the motion would read: you know, I make a motion to use ARPA funds to purchase a new transport van in the amount of eighty six thousand four hundred and fifty nine dollars and fifteen cents. Jeff, how, how time steps, how time sensitive is this to uh, say yay or nay for the company? When um, we told our vendor that when we had, as soon as we had an answer, we would let them know. Um, and last week we asked them if they could hold off a week on the for us so that we could kind of, I don't know, I'm not saying that it would be gone um, if we don't do something today, but I will be, I, I did promise them an update today. Anybody who wants a vehicle, regular vehicle kind of knows it's hard to get especially picky right now, but specialized vehicles beyond that are even hard. Yes. We that, found that, that out with the service trucks for the public works. And all that's that. correct. This and this vehicle um, is one of the higher top vehicles, so you can stand up in it and um, it would be When we were talking budgets, safer. I was thinking it was over 100000 We were kind of predicting this to be, so. That's, that's correct. By that measure, it's less than we expected. Yes. And we went with a, a different, with our new vendor, uh, that has helped significantly well, I'd be happy to make per motion to purchase the van that uh, that uh, Derek uh... okay we've got a motion on the a second and a second uh... okay. Commissioner Stoudemire yeah Commissioner Harris yes Commissioner Dickinson yes Commissioner Waymeyer yes chair done yes thank you, thank you. Next item is discuss 2023 funding levels for Franklin County's community partners. You want to lead us off, Derek, on this? Yeah, I can do that. Um, obviously, something we do every year. You heard proposals on the 21st. Um, Janet's done a nice job of kind of compiling some historical information as well as. Um, some averages based on feedback from the five of you. Um, I, I think what we typically do is have Janet run down through each partner and you guys have discussion on each one. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just in looking through the feedback we've gotten, you guys aren't too terribly far apart, it doesn't seem like. So that's, that's I, I think, gonna help facilitate this discussion. Um, but then the only thing I would say, and, and I've said this before, and, and, and I don't think your feedback is unreasonable at all, um, but just keep in mind what we're trying to do, you know, with our budget this year and just in terms of our own workforce and, um, you know, we're, we're not going to be able to find enough efficiencies to cover everything that that I think is going to be before you in September so um, but again I you know when I reviewed all of these I you know I I think you guys have done a good job here so um, Janet if you want to start and lead them through each one so I'm inclined to go down the list in alphabetical order how we have them set up unless unless anyone has any qualms to that Okay, so we'll start with CASA. It looks like all of you guys um, agreed to support CASA at the level that we've supported that, them at this past several years, which is 15,000. You guys have any other discussion on that? No. Okay, seeing okay. none, I'll um, tentatively write that down. The next one is COF. Um, COF uh, was funded at $95,000 for the past several years, um, and their request this year was for 125, which was a 
percent increase. Um, it looks like the most common answer from you guys was $100,000, um, although um, Commissioner Harris did go 5% over what they got last year, which was 99750 So any discussion on that? You'd be fine with 100, Rod? That's fine, yes. Sorry. And, and I should have said this from the get-go, but but please keep in mind that you guys aren't making firm decisions today. These are numbers that Janet and I will plug into the final budget. And then when you approve the final budget in September, you will be finalizing these numbers. So ideally, these would be locked in. We're coming up with a placeholder for the budget. Yeah. If we can't make the budget work, we have to circle back around. That's exactly yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so next on the list is Elizabeth Layton Center. Um, in the past couple of years, they've been funded at 175. Um, this year, they asked for 183,750, which was a 5% increase. Um, three of the five of you um, agreed to fund them at 183,750. Um, one wanted to stay the same, and one was not quite at 183,750. So, I chair that board. Um, even that being said, I um, I guess I didn't want that to affect my decision. Looking back historically, they've fared better than some of the other community partners over the last, I think we went back, what, seven years, six years, quite a while. Um, so, you look at like COF, which had been getting the same 95000 for as far back as we could look. Um, I think a lot of Elizabeth Leighton Center's future uh, uh, financial um, health depends on their gaining that designation through the state, which would help their reimbursement rates. Um, obviously, I believe in the mission of Elizabeth Leighton Center, the uh, I think it's a well-run organization and all that, but um, I guess trying to keep equity among all the good things we, we serve, uh, or that, you know, all of our community partners that do good work, I just... Uh, Put some of the additional dollars towards the other ones. Um, like I said, not at all anything to do with their mission uh, or the work they do. I would say that the dollars that Elizabeth Layton Center uses to fund their operations, <coughs> this is a pretty small um, revenue stream for them, and um, this decision doesn't change the, the future health. It's that designation that really does. If they can't gain that, then we have some, you know, decisions to make on the Elizabeth Layton Center board. <coughs> but, um, I guess, like I say, going back historically, uh, there's some other ones who have uh, maybe needed the, the resources to catch up. So just trying to be fair. Again, not a decision about that board. It's just... Uh, Do you think if they get that designation, they'll need less money from us? They probably will never ask for less. No. Um, reimbursement rates from the government have been stagnant for years, decades, um, I mean, without any sizable change. So really what it would allow them to do is compete with our neighbors for providers, which would then allow them to get more revenue and do more business that they just can't now. I mean, we have contracts with them. There are a partnership with them and several things in the county and a lot of times just not able to, you know, staff it. So need more providers to drive revenue, to make money to sustain the organization. So that's kind of a. One thing I might add, and, and, and there is not an amount here that, in my opinion, is, is unreasonable. In my opinion, I mean, this is a board decision. I, I just want to provide you with perspective. Back when we were trying to allocate CARES Act funds, so CARES Act funding, the CARES Act was the stimulus before ARPA. Um, we opened up CARES Act funding to our community partners, and ELC requested some, but they couldn't demonstrate a need. Like our consultant told us basically not to provide them with those funds because they they, they couldn't demonstrate per the terms of that, that legislation <laughs> that they met the need requirement. So again, that, 
that was just for a pretty specific stimulus, but I, I want you to, to have that info before you make this yeah. decision. ELC did do pretty good with grant funding, They, but also now they're really suffering from the labor shortage. They need labor to drive production to, to get revenue, so they don't have the labor. I think they're down 18th <coughs> time out of, so close to 20% of staff, and most of those are service providers. So they're, they're hurting from that reason, but um, again, uh, I guess big picture, you know, I didn't put, I guess, quite as much money into community partners as everyone else. If we had more, if we chose to put more, yeah, this is a place I'd put it, but only so many resources to add to what we already do and <coughs> wanted to be equitable. So. I think a lot of these have virtually more funds because they have less employees right now at this point in time. But I feel like it was reasonable to go 5% just because of inflation, sure. basically. Yep. Well, the 5% increase is what they requested, 183,750. Um, however, um, with two, two of the five of you coming in lower than the 5%, um, your average would be 181,250. I wouldn't disagree with any of the numbers thrown out. <laughs> Since we've got three of you at 183,750, which which would represent the highest amount, um, would you like us just to go with that? Plan on that? Okay. Oh. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dan. Uh, um, the next one is the Franklin County Agricultural Society. Um, if you recall, when, when we had our funding discussion, we um, talked about how we had allocated $14,000 for all the fairs in the county. We wanted to accurately represent that. So I broke those three fairs out for you this year. Um, of that $14,000, 12100 goes to the Franklin County Agricultural Society. Um, and they requested $25,000 this year, and that represents a 106.6% increase. Uh, two of you recommended $13,000 um, for funding level, um, and then one was higher at $15,000, and two were lower in the $12,000 range. However, we did have a couple of you said you were open, either open to discuss or you wanted to give them um, money for capital projects, whether that was out of ARPA funds or some other um, capital dollars that we have. So there's kind of a wide range here of what you guys have given us for recommendations. Um, the, the median funding level, obviously 13,000 with two of you <coughs> giving that recommendation and the average at 13,161. And that does not include the two of you that said you were open to discussing um, some capital money. That extra 10,000 that they had requested was for, to be able to make the bathrooms um, handicapped, accessible. handicapped accessible. And, and, and so I was, you know, so it would be just a one-time thing. It wouldn't, you don't want to put it so that you give it to them, but um, could that come out of the PGT money since that's where there. Yeah, it, it could come out of TGT funds. It could also come out of ARPA. What I would tell the five of you is if you want to pledge ARPA funds, I would ask that we get like a formal request from them for that because I've heard of a couple different capital projects involving potential ARPA funds. So I would just want to make sure that that we require them to do their due diligence in that regard. But yes, I am. You, you could I mean, use TGT. I, I, I mean, that's what I was thinking, that that, uh, that particular one we could come out of the TGT funds. Also, um, I would like to remind you that um, one of the rules for ARPA funding is that we have to have a procurement policy and adhere to it, and anyone we designate funds to also has to have a procurement policy. So they're going before we can give them ARPA funds, they would have to have a procurement policy, which means they would have to have some type of comp competitive bid process. They would have to um, 
you know, go through all of the steps that, that we would <laughs> normally go through with our procurement policy. Well, I'd be for keeping it at the current funding level and then being open to for, uh, paying for the bathroom upgrade up to 10000 okay. I agree. I think the, the normal funding and then just keep the uh, one-time uh, things separate myself. So. Are you thinking to leave it at the 12-1 if we're going to do the extra 10 for this year? That's what I threw out, yes. Okay, that's 12,100 um, and the rest of you had suggested other things so I mean I, I heard that they was possibly even wanting to tear up a driveway and real reseal it as it just and got old of you as far as talking chip and see. so I don't know how organized they are because he said something about maybe getting some funding and doing the bathrooms too so I mean can that actually be done later I guess as far as what project they decide to land on well, we could do that. We could just do the funding, and then if they actually have a solid number, and they could come back and ask. For oh, yeah. Give them yeah. time to flush out their idea. We kind of take yeah. them as two yeah. separate items. Absolutely. Because I mean, they was talking about possibly there was a grant or something they could get to help with the bathrooms too. So, so I think we'd be better off just to go with the regular funding and yeah, and, and step up with the rest of it later. So we can communicate with them in a number of ways, but what normally happens after this meeting is Janet will send them a letter saying the board pledged this amount. In this instance, we can also include, and they have indicated that they are willing to spend up to $10,000 in additional one-time monies um, to cover your proposed capital projects and just give them some instructions on how to, to do that. I wish you would have come in because I would have, I would have asked them about their electrical system and their livestock barn. That's true. They didn't it's very uh, not friendly to the guests of the fair because all those uh, generators are going, <coughs> so they don't have enough electricity not to use uh, no. uh, portable generators. That you have to scream when you're in that barn. So I wish you would have come presented to that us. <laughs> well, Roy, I'll tell you, we can absolutely require them to come in and present their ideas and before we give any kind of stimulus or TGT funds. That is a very reasonable request. So I, I certainly can reach back out to them. I did reach out to them um, both uh, by telephone and by email to let them know that you were having your um, funding meeting and did not get a response until the day of the meeting that that he wasn't going to be able to make it. So he did say that he was willing to come in um, some other time if you wanted him to. So I am happy to do whatever you, you want at this point. It sounds like what I'm hearing from you guys is you want to fund them at the current level, which is 12-1, and then um, include that you're willing to fund them up to $10,000. Um, do you want to include a stipulation that they need to come in uh, sometime soon and present to you? I think that's reasonable because I've got a couple questions for them. The answer well and I wouldn't spend ten thousand dollars without talking to you guys so I think we would require anyone that wanted to do a, a project like that to be in here presenting so I don't I don't think it's out of the ordinary at all okay level funding and ask them to come in okay level funding um, you're open to the 10,000 for capital projects and I'll get them in here and get them on an agenda for you. Okay. All right. Our next one is the Franklin County Conservation District. Um, for the past number of years, they've been funded at 40, 45,000. Um, they requested 55,000 this year, which is a 22% increase. Um, two of you uh, suggested that we fund them I'm sorry, two of you suggested we funded them at 47.250. Um, one was lower at 45, keeping them flat, and then um, two were a little bit higher than that. 
So your average would be 47.5, and your median most common answer was 47.250. Once again, I just went 5% from what they got last year for inflation. They do have one advantage over some of the others. <clears throat> A lot of these entities have to cover increase in their rent and their utilities where they don't. They're, they're, they're in the government office out there and they don't pay rent and they don't pay utilities. And computer service is offered to uh, the government. And so there's a lot of things that, that a lot of these others are having to face a big increase in. But, I mean, I'm not saying they don't need more fun. I'm just saying there's a lot of these other entities that are facing uh, costs that they're not. I think I, I went a little higher because the director has not had a raise for, what she say, since 2013, I think, and, and got a little bit of a raise. And how many employees would we have if we didn't give raises every year? I mean, so anyway, and that's why I went a little bit higher, but. I guess. Yeah, but also I don't see it as our job solely to ensure the health of that organization. They have several funding streams. If we didn't do that full increase, is it us, our fault that's, you know, anything bad that happens? Is it the state who I don't think has ever fully funded their obligation to them? Um, is looking at this whole list, um, I'm not against the work they do. I don't think that it's not a, a, a bad thing to them, but if we're going to put additional funds into these services of, of all these folks, uh, that's not, I guess, towards the top of my list. I'd, I'd probably put it towards some of the um, others before I put it here, so that's why I didn't do much of an increase. Um, again, you have to look at the, the big picture, and we we'll only have so much money to put towards towards these. So. So your, your median is, you've got a couple of you at 47,250, which is 5%. You average all of it out, it's 47,5. I mean, you're not far apart on that. Is there a desire to go with either of those numbers? You want to come up? Do you want to go down? I think you've all got fair rationale. I, I would be all right with the 47,5, just kind of split it in the middle. Seen a couple nods. Rory, Cole. 47.5. 47.5. Okay. Okay, next is Franklin County Development Council. I think that one kind of speaks for itself. Um, you guys, uh, they asked for level funding. You all supported them at level funding. So I think that one speaks for itself. Okay, the next one is the Historical Society. Um, in the past number of years, they've received $71,000. Um, uh, this year's request was $73,700, which is a 3.8% increase. Uh, let's see. Two of you said 737 um, because you were going for kind of a 5% across the board. And so since they didn't ask for... 5%, then you went to their higher number. Um, two of you um, stayed at 71, um, and I did get some feedback from one of you that said, you know, we've had a significant increase in uh, in kind to them with moving them to the new building, putting the HVAC system in the building, all the things that we're doing to get them moved into a better facility. So there's that to take into consideration. And then... Um, one came in just slightly below what their requested funding was at seventy three thousand, and that's the way. That, and and I wasn't that person, but that is exactly why I kept mine flat because of you know the the flooring and the AC and all everything that involved with that. Is why the majority of their funding in the past, and we will have this discussion later, came from transient guest tax. 
So, or, or a portion of theirs came from transient guest tax, and most of the things that you guys are doing to the building out there is coming from transient guest tax because that is what that building is for, for generating tourism. So, um, so that should be taken in consideration also. Well, and I, I was that person. I, I mean, it, we put a lot of additional money on top of what we pledged to them last year. And, um, you visited the old place and you visited the new place so there's no doubt that they're getting a better deal at the new place so i don't think this is a year to ask for more little uh divvy it out so yeah well and i i i would point out um we're charging them a hundred dollars a month which is basically just for nominal consideration for our lease so in addition to putting funding, uh, you know, significant funding into the visitor center or charging them next to nothing to be there. So I, I do encourage the board to consider the value of the in-kind services this year. Because we're not able to do that for all of our community partners either. That's fine. I'd, I'd go flat. I'd agree with that. <clears throat> I'd go flat for various reasons given. For this year. You know, yeah. kind of unknown now what what their needs are going to be when they move. So, okay. so, so seventy one thousand dollars a flat. Oh. Okay. All right, um, Franklin County Services for the elderly. Um, you guys asked me after the discussion to break out um, what we had what we had been spending on um, East Central Kansas Area Agency on Aging for the food program and what we had been spending on services for the elderly. So according to what they provided us and, um, and what we had paid them in the past, um, services for the elderly has been receiving $118,400, and they did um, request an increase this year of $40,000 to $158,400, which is a, almost a 34% increase. East Central Kansas Area Agency on Aging they did not increase, ask for an increase in that area. So you guys, a couple years ago, increased their funding to pay what they quoted as our fair share among the other counties. And so we have been paying them 107200 as part of the services for the elderly budget. But the discussion was this year to, to break that out. So... Um, everyone came in at a level amount for East Central Kansas Area Agency on Aging at 1072. And then the discussion is in the area of Franklin County Services for the Elderly. Um, we did have three of you uh, make a suggestion to do um, some type of one-time donation, whether that was from ARPA or from some other capital project, to help them um, supplement their, their van situation which they said they were was going to be grant funded and they needed some matching funds and that's 20,000 um, so that is an additional consideration and one of you came in flat two of you at a five percent increase and the other two just slightly over a five percent increase so they are a government agency and their money is coming from a government grant so surely they have as far as the procurement what the what they have to do surely they have to follow that to even get the grant money i would think i think i believe so i believe a lot of their money comes from k dot <laughs> so i mean i would this this one i would think would come out of the arpa fund if we chose to do that i'd be for keeping them like we did at the agricultural society uh helping with a. Uh, the match on the van for capital and then keeping their annual funding level. Throw that out there as a starting point, like we did on Ag Society. Hey, what, what is the appetite for, um, you know, I, I don't know, except three of you have $20,000 for the van match, and I don't know that we've been given verification that that's the amount, but if we... Go ahead. She did say in her um, information that she she gave us that they believed that the vehicles were going to be estimated to be one hundred and twenty three thousand six hundred dollars, 
and they would be required to provide a 20% match of costing approximately $24,720. And of that match, they put $20,000 into, in into this budget. Okay, okay. So, I mean, that's, uh, it's, for this year, it would be one time, obviously, but we could work with them and agree to pledge up to $20,000 of ARPA funds or 20,000 for the van match. And then that would be a, you know, a $20,000 benefit to them, which I don't have the percentage in front of me, but it'd probably be the biggest increase we've given to any partner if you elected to keep them flat um, and just do the, the ARPA funds. The only other thing is that one of the reasons that, I mean, this is providing rides for the elderly and they had to raise their driver fees from $7 to 12, um, plus the cost of gas. This is, this is gonna be a tough year for them, I don't know. I'd like to do a, a, go up a little bit on, the, on our, you know, out of our funds. The ARPA funds is not gonna be off of us. Say part of their budget's probably, I, I don't, I understand what you're saying. I'd say part of their budget's also probably going towards capital every year, their capital fund to fund it, try and get that balance up. And if we're taking care of their capital expense, it would free up that little bit of cash. But So this is the one that, that the five of you are kind of farthest apart on. I, I, I Again, please, we can do what you want, and I can propose ideas all day. Two that come to mind are staying flat and then proposing the $20,000 in ARPA funds for the van match. The other would be um, there are a couple of you that are at a 5% increase, um, and then which would take them up to 124320 and then add the ARPA match on top of that. And you can do anything in between that, but those those would seem. I know they go that way. I would be the fine with five percent. Yeah, and then uh, go for the ARPA on the other, because anytime you set a president and add them dollars right on the line and shows next year, that's what you give. Then you got to go back and revisit why you give more this way. It just keeps it consistent, and we take care of the other somewhere else. Which, you know, then you don't come back next year and feel like you're short them because you don't give them that much the next year. You don't have to think. So I'd rather go with the ARPA. So the you're too, saying man. you would rather stay flat and then go with the ARPA? I, I don't mind the, what we what we've uh, put in, you know, as a group. The 124, 320, the five. They're going to, hmm. am I correct? Going out to Flood Janet? Are you suggesting the 5% increase at 124, 320? Yeah. Okay. And then the other part looked towards ARPA on the, the money for the fan, Matt. Oh, you're the, you're the holdout oh, there. Cool. I don't know what KDOT does on their reimbursement rates on, on the other funding, but yeah, that. Uh, One thing I have a little problem with it when the. Um, their increases are based on wanting to give uh, employees raises. That kind of bothers me a little bit on that. Uh, so I'm, I am not willing to be flat and the van be a separate deal, maybe ARPA money or something else. You are? Yes. Okay. So I think I've got two of you that are willing to stay flat and use ARPA funds for, for the van match. I can go that way too, I just mentioned the other. Okay. okay. So, so well now I have four of you that are at the 118, 118.4 flat and then 20, up to $20,000 of ARPA funding for the van um, to be discussed in the, in the larger ARPA funding discussion. Yes. Okay, and East Central Kansas Area Agency on Aging will stay at 1072, and we will um, work with them on trying to fund them directly per your request. Okay, um, the next request is Hope House, 
and all of you suggested that we give them the ten thousand dollars that was requested by hope house except for one of you said it would be a one-time one-time donation through arpa so that was me my thought was uh, uh the use absolutely for it i mean i can't think of a lot of better uses than uh, putting some money towards keeping people to freeze freeze to death um but obviously, putting them up in hotels every night, probably not a long-term solution. I talked with Mr. Oglesby. He, he says he has plans for a long-term solution. Just before we commit annual money, uh, you know, make sure that, because like I think even Don said, that, you know, once you do it one year, you're pretty well committed to annually doing it. Just want to make sure that we have a long-term, you know, viable, uh, sustainable solution in place before we kind of do it as an annual, uh, approve it as an annual uh a, um, amount so we discuss it every year we do discuss it every year but i mean again putting somebody up you know it's not a long-term solution what it currently is so uh, we have arpa funds this year i was just uh, in favor of doing at least my my idea is a one time out of arpa again it you know the use I don't know how you could hardly be against the use, right? It stands reason this year. It'll sure stand reason next year. It's not, not as a way to get out of it. It's just uh, we probably need to keep keep discussing, uh, move towards a long term solution. So, well, the homeless situation is not going away uh, anytime soon. I would I would just like to see it just be. A yearly at this point. I mean, and again, we discuss it every year, so things change. Yeah, really, we we, and it's not we a agree bad. at least on amount, use, um, merits, all the things. It's just I wanted to take it out of ARPA and then reevaluate it like next year. Is a I think what we we have to consider it also is that, as I said before, for the other entities that we were suggesting ARPA funds for, especially the, the fair, is that they have to have a procurement policy and they would have to adhere to that and they would also have to be part of our, our probably be part of our ARPA discussion as a whole, so. Fair enough, then, I mean, I could do, I'm not I trying could do, to dis could, I'm not trying to discourage you from, from, from your point of view, I, I support that. I just want everyone to be clear that that it would be harder to spend the ARPA funds on it. I don't I don't think it will be harder to spend ARPA funds on it. I mean, and they may very well already have um, these policies in place um, just because of other work they do and have grant funding and things like that. So they they possibly already have that in place. I just want to make you guys aware of that. Well, and, and that's not our only option. Um, yeah. We can Absolutely. use a one-time, we can do it out of our budget, like a one-time expense pending further discussion. And I mean, I, I something to consider, and, 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 and Rick might have addressed this, I don't know, it's just, it's certainly a community-wide problem and just having discussions with other community members about what they are contributing to this, I mean, I. One thing I pride myself on is Franklin County stands on its own two feet. I want to do what the five of you think is right. But on something like this that affects the entire community, you know, should we be having bigger discussions so that we're all on the same page? I, I don't know. But but we can pledge 10000 We can We can make it ARPA. We can... Um, you know, make it out of our regular ad valorem budget. Or you can just pledge 10,000 and plan on doing it every year if you want. You have many options at your disposal. It's just. I think we could definitely have this discussion later. I mean, if you will recall, we usually set aside $310,000 in capital outlay, which is a regularly budgeted amount. Um, the only amount we readily allocate out of that 310,000 in the past several years has been the sheriff's rotation cars, which we generally budget about 150,000 by the time they purchase the vehicle and purple wave their other vehicles. So an offsetting amount about 150,000. So that leaves us about $160,000 in there for other things that come up. If you want to allocate some of this to that, 
I, I mean, we could definitely have that discussion when it comes down to us putting the budget together as a whole and seeing what the other requests are from our internal departments. So if you, it sounds like you're all in favor of $10,000. Um, I guess what we're talking about now is whether we want to allocate it as a one time and discuss later where it comes from, whether it comes from ARPA dollars or a, a, a new ad valorem amount or um, some capital money that we already have. So, but we could have that discussion later. So we just need to know whether you guys are intending this for to be a, a one-time thing or you want to include this in regular. Well, and I, I would go further and say, I don't need to know that, but I think Hope House does. I mean, I 10,000 is 10,000, whether right. it's one year or, or multiple, we'll have the same discussion right. a year from now but just in terms of feedback on expectations moving yes. forward. And, you know, and I'll go, just circle back, I'll even be fine saying, I understand, we're gonna commit probably at least $10,000 next year towards homeless situation. It's not that, I mean, the reality is, is we have a problem, it's gonna cost some money, and this is kind of a nominal amount. Now, like Derek said, we need to sit down and have a talk about a solution probably not it may not even be through hope house next year who knows where it is that's why i don't want to commit to spending ten thousand to hope house every single year because we don't know what the solution is i mean even you know rick said this is a band-aid i know rick has ideas for some more long-term kind of workable solutions i it's just we don't know what uh, where that's going to be um hope house does wonderful things if we give the you know if like I said, the solution may not end up being through Hope House. I don't know what organization it will be through. We don't know what it's going to be. I just don't want to commit ourselves to annually doing something if we don't know this is going to fit the long-term solution. So. so it sounds to me like Colt suggesting a one-time payout, um, and then we discuss this next year as part of a, you know, potentially a larger community effort i have no doubt whatever that's going to be will cost at least ten thousand dollars so it's not not the money thing it's just the i have a goal on this i think it should be a one one time deal and then discuss whether <coughs> it's going to be a sustainable ed valorem partner like the rest of them in the future i've got th three of you nodding now yeah Four. well it's ten thousand dollars and how however it is however we can get it there okay Again, wonderful thing about this money spent this year, 100% of it goes towards services. So appreciate that about about uh, this year's solution. Okay, so next one is Lane Agricultural Fair. They've been funded at $1,600, um, and they were requesting $1,600, and you all came in at $1,600. So I'm going to put that down and move on. Okay. Uh, Prairie Paws Animal Shelter. For the last number of years, they've been funded at $40,776. They requested $50,000 this year, which is a 22.6% increase. Um, the average of what you all um, suggested was $42,281. Um, the 5% increase is $42,815. Are we offering our partners to apply for funds from ARPA? As like we did with the CARES Act money? Um, we haven't yet, no. I was just thinking that maybe, I mean, the Prairie Pause is one of those that because so many of their fundraisers were, because nobody could get out, you know, nobody could get together, yeah. that was, it was kind of a hurt for, but as we get out of it, you know, those things are all, yeah. I mean, they're not in dire circumstances. I, they had their financial meeting last night. Um, uh, I would be fine with 5%. I don't know if you guys want to go that high. I know a couple of them, I mean, that was a great idea. I was like, how did they come up with the same number? Oh, now I know, 5%. <laughs> that was a good idea. That's $42,815 is 5%. And the average is 42,281. So you're looking at a 500 and some dollar difference there. 
you know, there were three of you that were in the $42,000 range, starting at $42,000, and then two of you at the 5%, which was $42,815. Um, you had one flat and one just slightly higher than that. Well, I'm sure they need all the money they can get for their animals, and I think 5% is pretty reasonable. Again, that's <coughs> my opinion. So. I can go with a 5%. Okay. So I think there are three of three you of at 42.8. Is that something that is palatable for, for the board? That's fine with it. Okay. Okay, um, um, last um, was Richmond Fair. They've been funded at $1,200 for the past several years. They were requesting $1,400 this year, which was a 16.6% increase. Um, the average um, recommendation came in at $1,312, and the median was $1,300. Um, so... Two of you said $1,400. The other three were less than that. Is Richmond and Lane, are their fares comparable? We're giving Lane 1600 Why are we not giving the other one more? We just have never requested. I think, I, and if any of the audience has feedback, I, I think that Lane has more buildings um, and we had given them more money for buildings in the past. As far as, because um, we don't know all of those, um, <coughs> as far as um, the crowd, Adam, the crowds are pretty comparable, but as size wise, Richmond's is more, um, it's more animal, um, 4-H centered, and there, and, and then Lane is more, uh, has some of that, but it is more concert types. They have them at both places, but the focus seems to be a little bit different, but they're both very well attended. Um, and it, they both bring in a lot of people from outside of Franklin County as well. And as, as you'll recall, all of our fair money had been funded out of TGT in the past. So we had allocated $14,000 total to the three fairs and all of that funding including the sponsorships that Richmond and Lane had gotten in the previous years, all of that came from TGT funding. Carrie would like to say something, if that's okay with you. For what it's worth, the Conservation District donates $100 to all three of the fairs also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I could go with either thirteen hundred or fourteen hundred myself, either way. I'm fine with thirteen hundred. Okay, so Commissioner Dunn said he's at either thirteen or fourteen. You have, we had two of you at fourteen hundred, Commissioner Dickinson and Commissioner Stottlemyer. Um the other two of you were less than that. We've got Colton Roy okay with thirteen hundred, or the rest of you okay with thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. Okay. Thirteen hundred is okay. okay. Thank you, Janet. So, do you want me to read back through these? Do you want me to? I'll, I can just um, put it together in a spreadsheet and email it back out to you guys, so you have um, what we. I would think that'd be fine. Definitely not the last time we're going to see these numbers. So. Right. Okay. So. Perfect. Okay, thank you for that, Janet. Okay, we're ready for staff reports. Uh, Derek, do you want to start us off? Yeah, I uh, will start by commending the five of you. That was, that was good discussion. That was about as... Uh, smooth as that discussion has went um, uh, as far back as I can remember I, I, I feel like you were all um, I, I know you put a lot of thought into it um, 
And, and yeah, I, I think you were all incredibly reasonable, and I, I think we found very good solutions, so kudos on that. Um, we'll, this is obviously the very beginning of the 23 budget, um, already spending a fair amount of time on that, um, looking at certain efficiencies, <laughs> um, things we can tighten up, maybe you know try and do a little bit better. Um, so know that, that that's considerable times being spent on that. And then um, you all know that our HR director is leaving us this week. So there's been a lot of time spent kind of getting staff lined out and, and making sure that we don't see a dip in services there. I'm, I'm confident with where we're at. Um, at a nice department head meeting. I think the team's all on the same page. Um, but obviously, you know, turnover is, is hard. We talk about it a lot. So um, just a lot of time being spent just processing turnover, which is obviously why we talk about retention so much. But um, that's really all I have, Roy, so thank you. Okay. Jared, do you have anything else? I wanted to provide a couple updates. As you know, when... Uh, we moved into our facility over on uh, Beach Street. One of the things that uh, we did um, was the, as the, what is it, the building commission, you guys uh, renamed that uh, our training room, the, uh, the Deputy Sam Smith Memorial Training Center. And our focus was to be able to get that um, used. So recently we did, um, that was used by the Kansas Traffic Safety Office. And we, uh, we were the host site for um, a, car seat class, um, which is uh, several days. I know that it seems you're just putting in car seats, but there's a lot that goes to that. And so we were the host site for that, and uh, that room was, was very well used. It was uh, very full. And uh, so um, that was, I just wanted to let you guys know that we are putting to use uh, that facility for what it is that we, that we intended. Um, Along those lines last week, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Was there advice given on how to keep kids from crying in car seats? <laughs> you know, I, I don't think we found that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> um, last week we did host, um, and we were not able to use our training center for this because of the number of people that we uh, anticipated. Um, so we used a different location, but we hosted a uh, livestock theft and livestock um, type meeting. We uh, had two of the uh, invest uh, livestock investigators from the Attorney General's office and then the Kansas Animal Health Commissioner um, came down as well and presented and it was, uh, we had just over 40 people in attendance that was law enforcement as well as livestock producers. Um, so that was uh, just a collaboration that we did that we um, helped get the word out through uh, Franklin County Farm Bureau and then the Livestock Association. So we can get people some, some information out there, so things to look for and let them know what some of the trends are. Um, as prices continue to go up, we'll probably see more thefts occurring and we wanted to be ahead of this and kind of let people know what to be on the lookout for. So that was the reason that we, that we hosted that and it went, it went pretty well. It was a pretty good class. Um, and then last week, um, the commission approved the uh, work release program. Um, so a uh, couple updates on that. The first one is, uh, Commissioner Waymar, we got that change in there on that form for, for the employers um, as far as making sure that we sign off on the, uh, the work comp insurance. And um, we have our first person, the first inmate working um, started today. So um, I want to say thank you to, to the board for approving that. But um, Tammy Alexander's here. I've told her. Uh, privately, thank you, but I want to uh, commend her publicly for her heavy, she did the heavy lifting. I wrote part of this and was part of the process, but the real heavy lifting was done by the lieutenant. And so I appreciate the work that she did there. And as this process goes on, I'm sure we'll, we'll have little things that we figure out here and there that to, to kind of tweak a little bit, but um, I appreciate the work that everyone put in on that. And that's all I have if you guys have questions for me. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Pat, do you have anything else?
Well, as everybody knows, it is almost April. April is free dump. So um, April transfer station is going to be busy. Um, just want to remind you all that um, actually starting Friday, City of Ottawa has their, their cleanup Friday and Saturday this week. Um, you know, the, our transfer station hours are, you know, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4, Saturdays 8 to 1. Um, so we'll receive a bunch of these boxes from over the weekend from Saturday on Monday and Tuesday. And then uh, after that, so we've got City of Ottawa. Then we'll go west of 59, which will be Richmond, Princeton, uh, Williamsburg, and Pomona on the 8th and the 9th. And then we'll go east of 59, the 15th and 16th of Lane, Rantoul, and Wellsville. And then we'll have our countywide dump, free dump for everybody, um, the 22nd and 23rd of this month. And that's when people can come out at, at no cost and, and dispose of their unwanted things within, within reason, of course. So I just thought I'd put that bug in, bug in everybody's ear and let them know that's coming up this month. So appreciate it. Thank you. Any more of the jail? That's it. Come on up. Tell us. Okay. Dustin, do you have anything? No, oh, sir. Casey? David? So over the last couple of weeks, our road and bridge folks have um, been focusing on trying to get our bridge decks uh, cleaned off and patched. Uh, these are bridge decks that are kind of in the uh, chip seal areas and then also the, the uh, areas where we're expecting to um, take care of the approaches. Uh, so that we've been uh, working on that quite a little bit. Um, and we've also completed a uh, ditching project on Montana north of uh, John Brown. It's an area that... Um, uh, really washes out bad, and so we were able to, uh, we hope, take care of that. We added some riprap once we got the uh, ditch cleaned out, and, and so that should be uh, a good thing. Uh, and then we saw, we've we also took advantage of the, the good weather and spent several days uh, patching potholes on our asphalt roads. Um, coming out of winter, that's always a heavy focus uh, this time of year. Uh, coming up over the next few weeks, uh, we've got another ditching project on Georgia <coughs> of Thomas. Uh, and then we've got a, uh, a crossroad tube that we're having issues with on Jackson between Iowa and Old 50 that we'll, uh, we'll go in there and, and get that squared away. And then with dust control um, uh, on the horizon, uh, applications for dust control are due uh, by Friday this week. And so once we get that list put together, we will start going out and preparing each of those sites uh, for the upcoming dust control. From a project standpoint, uh, I've been talking about uh, having Bartlett West come in and, and present on Old 50 and our master plan uh, for the shop site. Uh, got that tentatively scheduled for April 20th. Uh, that is a regular meeting, <coughs> but trying to juggle their schedule and my schedule, that's the earliest date that we could come up with. Um, and then the local road safety plan, uh, the KDOT consultant was here last week and drove all the roads associated with that. We're still several months away from really having any tangible information that we can utilize, but uh, they, they were here and the project is moving forward, so that's a good thing. And then finally, uh, on the 13th, I will be at a KDOT local consult meeting uh, up in Kansas City where they will uh, be, you know, they did a bunch of research on the bipartisan um, infrastructure bill, and they will be uh, presenting that information to us. So hopefully I'll come back with uh, information on how we can access additional funds for our roads and bridges and whatnot. So. Any questions, David? Okay, thanks. Janet, do you have anything? Commissioner, do you have anything? Uh, and that's really anything. I will be going to Wellville tonight, but uh, I might tell you that uh, Paul and I were invited to a round table up in Wellville last week, and it's really interesting. Uh, it's something that the, uh, the Franklin County Economic Development, Casey, which is the vice president of that up there, Lytle, he comes in uh, April with uh, the nursing home once they're sponsored, the meeting room and the lunch paid for that. And uh, they invited I and Paul up there, and there was home builders there. There was bankers there. There was real estate agents there. There was a school represented there. Um, and City of Wellsville was represented there. 
And there's a lot of good discussion. It's the first one of them they've had. If it goes over really well, they're going to up their game a little bit now that, uh, you know, they, they wanted feedback from everybody whether it was we thought it was worth it or not. And I already got feedback on several things emailed that different people sent. And I think they're really appreciative up there in that community, uh, Paul, and the work he's been doing and uh, and then putting towards it. So, it, like I said, it was a good, a lot of numbers put out to us. It was interesting, the amount of houses that are being built up there now, the amount that are scheduled to be built up there. And then a bank, one of the bankers, kind of interesting thing, he, uh, uh, they, uh, probably a lot of banks do this. I just didn't realize it. But they, they spec a house, a standard size home, lumber only. And about every three months, they have a company that, that does that, and I don't know if it's an engineering firm or, or uh, who does the pricing, but every three months they give them an update on what lumber costs to, to go in the standard size home. And when they started doing it two years ago, it was 45,000 for the lumber, and it got clear up to 80,000 here. It went back down some with the lumber cost, but that just goes to show you the flexibility one on the housing costs and everything. But it went real well, and I, I appreciate it. Uh, uh, they, they had good things to say about the county involvement in the last few years on the county part and economic development part, part of both. Uh, Paul and I have been working on another deal. I would uh, like to read and been working on economic development deal with the six counties. We've had several deals. Well, we're working along with the having somebody come in from the State Commerce Department that specializes in small businesses. Uh, and they're going to be at our meeting, may, supposed to be there May the 3rd in this room. And we're inviting all the economic development directors to come to our meeting and let the gentleman give the presentation ahead of time. So if they got, you know, it's a way for all of them to meet with this one person from up there that uh, uh, provides funding and direction and, and ideas and we think it'll be a good thing. It won't be much money cost to it. And just there's their money to get here. There's their lesson to him. And I'll tell all the commissioners that we're inviting the commissioners. Of course, I have commissioners from each one of the counties on our board. So there'll be each county represented by a commissioner also at that meeting. So uh, that's it. Okay. Well, I do good Oh, yeah. I went to the city commission meeting. Ottawa City Commission meeting last week, they approved the final plat for a Markley addition, and I think it will be a part of the neighborhood revitalization, so not right away, but um, the, they're building four single-family homes and five two-family homes on the east side of town. Um, they also are put out for bid. They're going to do a stormwater project between 13th Street and 15th Street on Cedar, and they're actually going to widen that street to help the flooding issues that go on there. And yet, uh, Monday at their study session, they uh, chose Zach Clayton to be their new commissioner to uh, replace Tom Wygam. Um, on Thursday, I went to the um, Chamber of Commerce retreat. Um, basically, it's kind of a five-year plan, kind of just you know where where it's heading. Um, John Cohen feels like he probably will be retiring within those five years. So it really is a, uh, you know, where where are we where are we at and where we're going to go and how are we going to get there and 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 the leadership that's going to be needed to um, take do that on Friday. Um, I went to the Chamber Coffee at the Farm Bureau to celebrate National Ag Week. Um, that afternoon, I did listen to the legislative update. A lot of the stuff right now is still in, you know, going from one house to the other. So it'll be interesting to see what all comes down the pike yet from that. Uh, last night I did attend the Prairie Paws um, Finance and Audit Committee. Um, and I think I already gave kind of an update on that. So I think that's all. Okay. Don't do that. Okay. Uh, uh, I really don't have anything. I just went to. Farm Bureau Coffee also just to celebrate uh, Ag Day. So that's all I've had. Uh, anybody else have anything for the good of the county? I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Second. 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 Second.
adjourned.